Right, I've got Farmer P's old trailer on board and I'm just about to go and pick up some round bales. So what a year so far it's been. With all that rain, it's given us a bonkers amount of grass on the farm. So you saw the main silage cut we did uh, last week um, and the clamp was absolutely bonkers full. Bonkers full, I like that word bonkers. Uh, bonkers full of grass, We've never had so much grass in the clamp. We've also got a Billy Bonkers amount of uh, round bales. I have had baled on the day after uh, silage making main cut, 237 bales of silage baled. And that was three fields worth. Um, unreal really. I mean, admittedly we're two weeks behind uh, silage making and there's no doubt the growth would have been a lot more because of that two weeks but not that quantity, especially when we think we took out one field out, which we didn't bother putting into silage this year because we thought better to let the cattle have it. So we got a phenomenal amount of grass, uh, so much so that I don't think I'll have to do too many more bales this year, which is a good thing. So I'm gonna cut back on the fertilizer now. I've got bought a load of fertilizer in, I'm not putting so much on uh, because there's no point in trying to chuck money on the floor to grow more grass if we've got enough. Uh, even if the maize crop is low, we've got so much in the clump we can put feed silage into the ring feeders. Um, right, so we're going to go down. I'm doing one field at a time. We're trying to clear the fields because quite quickly because uh, we want to graze them again in a couple of weeks' time. Um, I would put fertiliser on those, but at the moment it's not looking like any rain, so I'm not going to bother putting it out. Right, let's get on down. I'll show you what we got over the other side of there once I've opened this gate and got down. Right, let's crack on in a minute. In a minute. Right, I've just realised, oh flipping heck, Harry's car. You might have seen Harry's got a car now. Oh, he's, he's parked where I want to put the bales. Look, fair play, it's not his fault. I didn't tell him to put anywhere else, but look, that's where I want to put these bales, which are multiple. Oh, right, I'm gonna have to stack, I'm gonna have to go forward with the bales. Oh, Harry, bless him. He's got Hawaiian, let's have a look in a minute. He's got Hawaiian, um, okay. Multitasking, you know what I'm like. When I'm trying to talk and do stuff, I can't. Right, he's got Hawaiian uh, neck thing in the um, in his car. And an air freshener. He wants to get a beacon for it. What else do you want to get? He wants to get a light bar. Oh, nutter. Right, I'm going to dump this here in a minute and we'll go back. I've got to move the loose ones around near the thing. Look at this though. Uh, I'm not sure how many are in this field. I reckon about 100. Ridiculous amount. Let's leave the trade over there. We'll come back to that. Well. There's a lot of, I say a lot, there is a lot of bales everywhere. Um, there's quite a few bales up here that are just randomly placed around where I'm going to be parking the trailer. So I'm going to move those first of all. Um, and then I can, then I can drive the trailer up there. All right, put four wheel drive on. It's really hot. Is the word muggy? Muggy, muggy, muggy. Oh, wake up, muggy, I think I've got something to say to you. It's late September and I really should be back at school. All you did was wreck my bed and in the morning kick me in the head. Oh, Maggie, I wish I'd never see your face. I know you've missed my singing. There it is. Ross Stewart's got nothing on me, has he, really? Right, let's have a look. We're we'll going to have a look at Harry's car where he's parked it. I've got this bale here. Oh, about to drop that one through the through the things. Right. Let me just undo that. Oh. oh. Right. Let's go and have a look. I'm gonna have to park it really close. 
in front of Harry's car, but not damage Harry's car. How bad would that be? Right. Let's go and have a look at Harry's banger. If you haven't seen it already in a video, now's the chance. Look at it, bless him. Look, he's got his he's got his priorities in life, look, he's got his Hawaiian thing there. I don't know where he got that from. You see that in other cars, don't you? Um, he's also got a cushion sit on because he's not big enough. Um, we haven't got him a cassette for his cassette deck yet. I think it's locked. But um yeah. He's had a good old rally round in it, but we've got to, I've got to move that. I'm going to bring the keys along this afternoon, I think. Um, I might be able to shift it. So I'm putting putting along here. This is the floor of an old barn. There used to be a... When I was a kid... Look at this. These lumps of concrete. That was the cow stalls there. This used to be, a, I think, a little old milking shed. Um, my dad top knocked it down in the 1980s. It was corrugated iron, and it, we just put hay in it. You kind of look, I mean, the, the bottom of this has been good for us, but you kind of look at it now and think, oh, we should have probably just kept it, really. Because any old little shed, you know, even if it's an old leaky thing, was better than nothing, really. But at the time, it was just like, let's clear this old crappy shed. And of course, now you probably put a plan application in and get a flipping house on it. Um, but that's the way it was in those days, wasn't it? No one was converting barns. I, it's interesting, the whole whole let's talk about policy at the moment the, the policies have just changed again haven't they for barn conversions and you can have up to 10 barn conversions on a farm and i think you can you know providing it sort of meets what their requirements are you can pretty well convert them well when i was a kid growing up there wasn't such really barn conversions were only in the infancy really there's the odd one who'd done it but not many and i had driven by farms where they knocked down barns perfectly good one not far from here i can think of it and one over there that was really lovely old stone barns so sort of one lot was in the middle of a field the other lot was on the side of the road and they just flattened them and that was 40 years ago whereas now crikey if you had that barn you're probably talking a few hundred thousand even in a dilapidated state um but that was just how things have changed isn't it and you can't predict that how about that you know so like like with this corrugated arm barn here you'd probably look at a three bed family house now and going well we can do something with that I don't know maybe not maybe not. I don't know how, what the rules are for corrugated iron sheds but um hindsight isn't it anyway right I'm going to carry on with this let's move a few of these and then we'll we'll go and move a trailer <clears throat> oh I'm so hot I've shifted those bales up by Harry's car. Apparently Harry's car is called Boris, which is kind of like, why? Um, anyway, I've messaged him as well. He's at school saying, where's your car keys, mate? I need to move your car. He won't be happy about that. He not like me driving it. Probably worried I'm gonna bash it. Uh, right, so I'm on moving these bales now putting them on the trailer because I don't want to keep driving back as a horse too far. Look at that sight though, that is a lovely sight all those bales. Let me just open the door. Get a better view. I got a hell of a crop of bales. Because they keep growing on the ground. Hell of a crop of bales. Let's hope, let's hope we have a growing year this year. You know, some years aren't growing where you're flipping that. You're just looking at the grass and it's not going. 
but with all this rain it is a completely growy grass yeah it's not been good for the arable boys because they haven't been able to get their crops in but um from a farming grass point of view because it's been warm and wet the grass has gone absolutely bonkers isn't it absolutely bonkers conkers look at it right clean these windows they're not very easy to see out recording the history of this farm in many ways doing these videos and it is the history of farming in the early part of the 20th century um, okay so I've got machinery from the later part of the uh, actually you know what it's the 21st century isn't it? Early, so I'm recording history from the early part of the 21st century but I'm playing with toys that I've had from the 20th century so this bale grab bought in about 1990 stuff tractor bought in the uh 2003 but i'm wondering do you reckon by the end of this century i wonder whether this will all be robotized uh because realistically if you can get technology the way it's going why do you need a human on, on a bale grab if you could you could have it programmed to sort of like identify the bale area I don't see why you couldn't have something that would pick up the bales automatically go around the fields. What you would be lacking is the manual intervention with the um, kind of things like if you ripped a bale, someone's got to jump out and put tape on it and stuff. But I do wonder whether that might be where we're going one day. And if it's not in my lifetime, then it certainly will be in Harry's, I would have thought. I mean, the same with the mowing, you know, mowing, mowing the grass and, and baling it you sort of think at some point is that just going to be handed over to something driving that tractor remotely i, th I think everything like that's all right until something goes wrong isn't it it's, it's the human bit is the is the intervention to either prevent problems or to sort them out like when something when you when you sat in a tr tractor and you hear this massive clunk and you think i better turn that turn that motor off straight away and check what's going on because maybe a bearing's gone and you have to get out and sort that out now the sort of thing maybe robots and stuff can't really handle it or maybe they will in by the end of this century i kind of wish you know i wish you could be around and just look what the future is but maybe maybe that's a bad thing maybe, maybe it's better not to know what the future is and well i'm sure it is because if you did you'd probably go oh my god what a nightmare there's now 120 million people living in Britain and you, and you can't drive on the road because there's no room and all that. God. And it was certainly a quieter place when I was a lad, so if you think what it'll be like in 100 years' time, it could be a bit messy. Anyway, I am doing my usual farmer off the subject. I know some of you like that. Right, I'm just... We're carrying on with the bales. Let's get on. Let's crack on!
trailer's loaded. Look at this. I scagged this one here. Look at that. That's annoying. On here, it's just a bit tight getting in. Look, ooh, look. Can you see the uh, effluent coming out of it? These are wet bales. I just, it's a bit snug for the bales. There's a little bit of a gap there, not a lot, a bit of gap here. I think I placed them better actually on the back, on this side. That spacing's a little bit better. Did I leave a gap there? Yes, I did. So I need to be a little bit more aware of that. I haven't used this trailer many times and I think, um, yes, the spacing's, on, on our old trailer, the other Norton we've got, the spacing, I get three on the bottom, three on the bottom and there's usually quite a little bit of gap between the ends with that one there it's a bit tighter but i think also these bales might be a little bit bigger than than some years so uh they're filling the trailer really well so that's good um so, uh, eight nine ten eleven twelve bales i can carry in one go i might be able to get more on there but to be honest i don't want to overload it i don't know how good the tires are on here the, the thing you gotta be careful is old trailer like this the tires might be 40 years old if i put too much weight on them and they went pop because they're probably a little bit fragile that wouldn't be good if i move 12 at a time i'm going to shift quite a few quite quickly right let me get this up the top hi ho hi ho it's off with my bales i go la 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 Do you know the thing about this job? Oh, that's a, it's feeling the weight of the. I should have put the 105 on. It's feeling the weight of these bales, I can tell you. I wonder how much they weigh each. They're going to be heavier than normal years, I think, because of the amount of water in them. Um, oh. Oh. Yes, this tractor is a little bit underpowered for this load, I think. The 105 would have been a better better gig. Never mind. Right, let's get it up to the thing and park up. Ooh, I just, uh, I've just pulled up here and I just think oh, I thought the tyre was flat for a moment, look. But I think it's actually pushing the tyre into the ground. The ground's pretty soft, it's still pretty wet. I don't think, let me just check these. I don't think they're flat, flat. They could probably do with a bit of air in them. Oh, right, they probably could do with a bit of air. These bales are way heavier than normal. Oh, I might have to take this back at lunchtime and just put the compressor on it and uh, just pump a bit of air into them, I think. But in the meantime, I'm just going to get this load undone. Undone, unloaded. You know what I mean. There we go, all carefully recorded on a camcorder till the battery went flat. Anyway, I've got all the bales off the trailer now. There it is, empty trailer. And I've also got my bale here that's ripped. There's a couple of, there you go, a couple of little holes. I got my tape. This stuff is phenomenally expensive now. It used to be about a fiver a roll. And I looked it up today and the rolls I'm using, this is a small one, I think. The other one's a bigger one. About 12 quid a roll now. All this stuff you end up paying for, they didn't factor it into the milk price. It's just 
extra money for so basically the moral of this is don't rip your bales because it's expensive to repair them some of these patches don't always stay on but if you've got a small hole like that it's worth doing because at the end of the day if you get air in it the, they start rotting and, you, and by the time you get through the stack later in the year you'll end up finding a big moldy bit there so it is worth patching them but if you rip them really bad it's just to be honest it's probably easier just to feed them right anyway i'll just stick this back i'm going to carry on loading we'll have a little look later i don't think you need to see me filming uh loading every single bale down there or all, all uh whatever it is in this field a lot so let me just put this one back and then we'll go